Good afternoon. I'm Dorothy Barnett, Executive Director of the Climate and Energy Project and your host for today's webinar. Today's workshop continues a series of workshops funded in part by the Kansas Health Foundation to help prepare Kansans to run for office. We're excited to be partnering with some terrific organizations for this series. Our next workshop, Path Pathways to Civic Engagement, Serve and Run with the Kansas University Institute is next Wednesday, May 26th at 1230. We'll share a full list of workshops in the chat. Sponsors for the Get Ready and Run for Office series include the KU Institute for Leadership Studies, the League of Women Voters, Kansas Rural Center, Citizens Climate Lobby, Kansas Interfaith Action, the Mainstream Coalition, and the Voter Network. Let me begin today's event by telling you about the Climate and Energy Project, sometimes referred to as CEP. CEP builds resilience in Kansas through equitable clean energy solutions and climate action. Established in 2007, CEP programs address clean energy, climate resilience, climate and energy policy and civic participation. Initially focused on renewable energy and energy efficiency as economic solutions for Kansas, CEP programs expanded in 2015 to address public health, equity and justice as critical intersections with climate and energy issues. Climate justice, environmental justice, and racial justice are all critical to realizing our vision of a healthy and resilient Kansas. To that end, we support all efforts to alleviate structural inequalities and end institutional racism. Using a collaborative approach, CEP connects people, organizations, and ideas we present science-based facts and facilitate critical thinking and community engagement. We work diligently to co-create equitable and productive solutions. Our work drives climate adaptation and reduces risk while increasing community resilience in Kansas. Today's workshop focuses on knowing your why and we're very excited to have Raquel Thiessen with us today. Raquel is a director of community partnerships at the Kansas Leadership Center. Raquel works to support and strengthen the network of local leadership programs throughout the state that collaborate with KLC. As a lead member of the civic engagement team, she also develops and executes strategies that mobilize KLC alumni who serve in elected and appointed roles to help build the civic culture for better progress on the tough community challenges in Kansas. Raquel has worked with community leadership programs in some capacity for more than 25 years and cares passionately about elevating the support and services available to community programs from KLC. We're very excited to have Raquel here and I would like to turn it over to her. Raquel? Thank you, Dorothy. I am really thrilled to be here this afternoon. I'm happy to be a participant in this series and uh, especially excited to talk about this particular topic today. Uh, know your why, getting clear about why you are considering running for uh, political office or for elected office. Um, I'm gonna give you just a couple more details about myself that might help um, frame up um, you know, why me? Why Raquel in this conversation um, about this topic? And I certainly invite um, anybody that's um, here with us today, put your name in the chat bar, um, maybe the community you're from, and tell us, or tell me, I guess, uh, what position you are thinking about running for. Maybe you've already filed, maybe you're considering it, maybe this is the farthest thing from your mind and you're just curious about this conversation. Either way, I'd love to uh, see a couple things in the chat bar, but let me give you just a bit more about me. So uh, I have been connected to the Kansas Leadership Center since the very beginning and since you know, 2007. And at that time, they asked me to chair an advisory group um, 
of all Kansas community leadership programs. They wanted to know what did CLPs, that's what we call them, community leadership programs, what did CLPs want from this brand new organization, this new organization thinking about leadership development. And so I chaired that, uh, that particular advisory group and helped that group get to a place where they were sharing um, and shaping what Kansas Leadership Center would be, um, not just in the next few years, but over the next um, couple of decades. And crazy enough, here we are in 2021, and that was way back in 2007. I personally uh, have been connected to these ideas, um, personally and professionally, um, for a really long time. Uh, these ideas make a lot of the KLC ideas, that framework makes a lot of sense to me, and I've used it um, in places um, in the, at the community level, which is what we're talking about today, um, in a really powerful and impactful way. And I hope to frame and have conversation with you this afternoon um, that connects these ideas to thinking about um, elected office. I um, have been an elected official myself, so I don't come to you talking about this topic without any kind of experience. I was a, a city council member in a tiny little town called Gossel, maybe you know it, it's here in Kansas, it's north of Wichita, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes, town of about 500, and I served on the city council there for four years. And then I made the move, we moved my family, we moved back to Newton, which is where I grew up. And I served on the Newton City Commission from 2007 to 2015. And two of those years, I was the mayor. And there is no time in my life um, where these ideas have been more pronounced <laughs> than serving um, as an elected official. When I was finished being a city commissioner, I went on and served in a couple of other appointed roles um, at our in our community. And uh, I don't know, there's just a really, there's a really strong connection between exercising leadership, um, deciding to take that risk at the community level um, and knowing what these, but knowing that some of these Kansas Leadership Center ideas connect to you and that work. Like Dorothy said, um, I work, I'm full-time staff member at the Kansas Leadership Center with a focus on community leadership programs and the KLC alumni um, who currently or have in the past uh, serve as an elected or appointed official. And so the fact that there are many of you considering that, um, I, I already feel connected to you. <laughs> One, because you're putting your name out there, you think this might be for you. Um, and it's the work that I do um, day in and day out. So uh, that's a bit about me and I've given you ample time to, to put some things here in the chat bar. And I'm just gonna, I just wanna get a sense of who's here. Since most of you aren't showing me your faces, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna scan the chat bar here and just get a sense of, of who's with us today. Um, you all have had uh, the opportunity to look at this. So Jill was thinking about a seat on the, the water one word seat. Uh -huh. Dorothy, she's always interested in helping increase civic participation. <laughs> okay, Ben, a candidate for Mission City Council, Ward 4. Very nice. Beth is thinking, oh, generally curious and interested in learning more. So I don't know, maybe Beth isn't thinking she wants to do this right now, but maybe that's something that comes up in her life later. <laughs> um, David, Prairie Village City Council candidate. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm curious, um, and you'll have to tell me later in this conversation, if you are rerunning or if this is um, a brand new, a brand new experiment, perhaps. Hey. Aaron doesn't have any positions yet, but you know, maybe she'll get there. <laughs> Gosh, hey, it's yeah. a new one. Uh, returning to the council. Returning. Okay. Very nice. Leilani is on the city board and applying for the state board. Okay. Maybe interested in running for other positions. Fantastic. I don't, I think you, uh, I think maybe, you know, deeply embedded in us are like this idea that maybe we want to do this someday. And 
we just have to have the right conversations at the right times <laughs> for these things to like fully uh, bloom in us and get us to a place where we decide to put our name on a ballot. <laughs> That's a big decision. Um, and then I think once you've caught the bug, maybe you've always got it. I don't know. I do. <laughs> uh huh. So getting here to the, I, I hope you don't mind that I'm taking the time. It just, this feels really important to me. Overland Park, currently an intern, intern for CEP. Uh, how does government work exactly? So, well, thank you for uh, putting all of that in there. Um, if we could, let's see if it's Sarah or Aaron, somebody, if you could pop over to that next slide I have. And let, let me assure you, this is not an hour's worth of slides. <laughs> I have two, the title page and this session objectives. Like this is, this hour will be um, conversational, experiential, and it is not me a talking head for 60 minutes. That would just be terrible <laughs> um, here. But this is what I'm thinking we need to accomplish today. Like I, I want you to be able to have conversation out loud, like talking with strangers. I'm guessing you don't know everybody here, but talking out loud with strangers about why you care about running for, um, an elected position, or just why you care about being an elected official if you already are. Uh, sometimes just saying things out loud makes a big difference. Um, I also want to think it's important to discover what tensions exist between your reasons for running and what others might be expecting from you. And that's a really, um, that's a real thing. And I had lots of personal experience, and I won't bore you with all the details, but why I ran and what others were expecting from me didn't always line up. That's okay, but you just need to know it. <laughs> you need to know that going in. Be, be considering the stories that other people are telling about you. And then I think, you know, especially if you're considering this, you know, now or in the future, uh, it's really important that you get some clarity so that you can move closer to either deciding yes or no, this is what I wanna do. Um, just being really clear about whether or not civic engagement at this level um, is for you. So that's that's what I hope we'll accomplish here in the next, I don't know, 40, 40 or 45 minutes. So you can go ahead and take that slide away um, and let's just you know have as many faces on the screen as we can. So here's how I want this to go. Like, like I said, it's gonna be conversational. Um, you all have to be participants in this with me. It's not just me doing the work. Um, but I, I, I have three kind of three sets of questions that I believe will just start at, you know, at, a, at a level and each question is gonna go a level deeper and it's gonna get you to a place where you're thinking, hmm, do I know my why? Is this really where I'm headed? Is this what I wanna do? And we'll do some breakout conversations, um, go into some small groups and just you know, give everybody a chance to talk. And then we'll come back and do some large group sharing. Um, so unless there are you know, any major objections to, to my plan of action here for the next 20 or 30 minutes, this is where we're gonna go. And here's the, there's, this is the first small group that I want you to be thinking about. And Sarah's gonna get us into small groups uh, when it's time. But here's where this, I, I think there are, there are pressures that everyone experiences when they're thinking about or deciding to run for elected office. And there are three levels. And I think this first level is this personal, it's this individual um, pressure. And I want you to just dig into that a little bit. Um, whether you are, are already serving and rerunning or just thinking about it, or maybe it's you know something in the future for you. But I want you to think about um, where your interest in serving at this level comes from. And maybe that's, you know, you just figured that out last week. <laughs> like, oh, this is a new idea. I think I want to try this. Or maybe it's just been something that's, you know, kind of tickling the back of your brain um, for a really long time. But I wonder what that tickle in your brain is about. Where does that come from? You know, do you have generations of elected officials in your family and that just feels like yep this is what I'm supposed to do I was born to do this or maybe it's you know gosh I just I you know I've got kids now and they're in the public school system and I care a lot about you know being a school board member you know whatever I just want to know what 
where your interest comes from. And so Sarah, if you could dump us into groups and we'll be there for about, I don't know, maybe five minutes, let's say five minutes. And I would love it if everybody in the group um, takes their turn in sharing about where that personal thing comes from. And so when you see a chance to join a group, go ahead and join and then we'll come back in a few minutes. And anyway, we're back here in the large group. And I was saying that I love the small group conversations so much because you know, the energy starts to build in there. And I love uh, the fact that voices get in there. And we're going to go back to that. But I do want, um, I'd love to just pull out a couple of highlights from the conversations that you had in, in your small group. Um, that this whole individualized pressure, where is your pressure coming from to think about running for office? Putting your name on a ballot, or putting your name throwing your name into the, into the ring to be selected for an appointed role. Where does that come from? I'm happy to share. Um, I think that there's, um, I was sharing that I, I have a very public professional life, but a very private private life. And thinking about running for office feels like there would be even more like eyes on me as a, as a, as a person in my private life. And um, Jill and I were talking about how there are opportunities to align running for office or positions that you could, um, like I was thinking about maybe running for a seat on my local electric cooperative board. Um, and that actually aligns beautifully with my work. So the, the extra eyes on me wouldn't be like me as a knitter. It would be me, you know, in, in, in my capacity as somebody who knows about energy and re renewables and such, which feels like that is like a little bit of a pressure valve there. Okay. Really. How about somebody else? I'd love another story in here. We were usually inspired by others' stories. I might encourage Ben if he's willing to share a little bit about what we shared in our group, since he was the, um, the person who actually has already filed. I think that's an exciting step. And Ben, if you'd be willing to share. Yeah, sorry again for the dim lighting here. It's a gloomy day. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's right. I, I uh, filed a few weeks ago for Mission City Council. Um, the current council member is vacating her seat to run for mayor. Um, and there are, there are a number of issues. Um, and I'm sure folks local to Mission are aware of some of the development oriented ones. We have the lovely Mission Gateway we're still trying to, to wrangle. And that's a, an important issue since my ward and neighborhood are right next to it. But, um, you know, uh, I've, I've seen people ahead of me, um, both on, in, you know, in the city council and on the uh, appointed commissions doing some great work around uh, improving our parks and some really awesome work around sustainability efforts. And, uh, you know, when I heard that our council member was was gonna run for mayor and, and there'd be an open seat, uh, I kind of suspected already that that might be the right place for me. And and when she came to talk to me about the opening, I uh, that was that was pretty much the, 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 the final thing that made me decide to go file, so. Uh, ben, had you ever thought about elected office before? I mean, was it, did you grow up with it or did that come from anywhere? No, um, I, I had thought about it. I'd never really made any serious uh, attempts at, at being elected. Um, I, I had, when, when my wife and I moved to Mission a few years back, I got involved with some of the, uh, like the Parks and Recreation Commission and, and was thinking about maybe um, trying to get on the Planning Commission. Um, just because you know we moved here because we 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 like what we see we like what's going on and we mm -hmm. wanted to get involved um, and uh, you know I started going to council meetings and and committee okay. meetings and reading all the minutes and just realized there's there's a lot of stuff that um, that's important to our community and and I'm hoping I can have a good impact and and uh, move yeah. move mission forward in the right direction and and you know serve mm -hmm. serve the constituents of the ward and, and yeah. hopefully uh, improve things for everybody. Yeah, I love that. I, uh, <laughs> I, when I was in high school, I wanted to stir, serve on the student council, but I was, I was really shy and there was no way in heck I was gonna go out and, you know, try to do my thing at the high school level. And so I just shied, you know, literally shied away from it and regretted it. And so when I finally ran the first time, I was like, all right, you know, I'm gonna have to make up for lost time here. And so, <laughs> you know, it was this thing that had kind of, you know, had been stirring in me for a long time, but I had to get to the place where, you know, well, I don't know, lots of reasons, but 
this it had been uh, had been a part of me part of my thinking for a long time. I want to I want to kind of dig into this second uh, level of the second kind of pressure, and it has more to do this time around um, with the people that that know you, your friends, uh, family, uh, peers, people that you know for better, for worse, <laughs> know, know who you are, um, know what makes you tick, um, and, and maybe even know that you are considering running. And so like Ben, like obviously his wife <laughs> knows that he's considering, that he's putting, his name is on the ballot. And I wonder, I wonder what you've thought about in terms of like, this is why I want to run. This is why it feels important to me. But I wonder what those are, the, the people closest to you, what are they thinking are your reasons for running? Like why, why is Ben, why did Ben put his name on the ballot? Why is Rachel considering a seat on that board? And those may not be, those may be stories completely unlike what you, are actually telling yourself. But I wonder, I wonder what some of that might look like. And I'm gonna just hold us here in the large group uh, for a couple of minutes for this conversation. Just to keep things, just to make sure we pay attention to time. But I'd love, I'd love some conversation here in the large group. I'd certainly be happy to pipe up again, but I'll give yeah. somebody a chance yeah. if they want to. No, Ben, if you've got an answer, I want you to go for it. That's going to give a couple okay, other great. about their answers. But why do you think others, why are others thinking you're running? Got any well, um, like I say, I, I'm not certain how many people know that I've filed. My name is out there on the election website. I've got the, I've got my website and Facebook page up. So I've had some interaction and certainly those uh, folks a little closer to me know and, and support, support me. But um, I think the people that do know that I'm, that I'm running have seen me um, like I say, at the council meetings, at the committee meetings, uh, standing up for what I view as, um, you know, good development patterns, first and foremost, projects that I think will, will help make mission healthier and more sustainable and, and more, um, you know, financially secure. And, uh, and I think, I think um, most people that know me and know that I'm running are aware that I um, have really strong beliefs around um, sustainability and, and that, that we um, can't afford to sort of sit idly by and, and let, um, you know, let our, let our carbon footprint continue to expand and, and continue to uh, sort of decline the, or, or reject um, like housing density and affordable housing um, and, and, and social justice and the, and the list goes on. But um, for, for, I think for the people that have seen me in mission specifically, it has a lot to do with with making sure that we're making mission uh, strong in the future in terms of, of development and um, ability to continue operating and continue you know paying bills and doing maintenance and also oh, doing hey, what we can. Hey Ben, can I ask you something? Yeah. You think there's anyone telling a story about why you're running that isn't as noble? Um, not yet, but I, I, I have I have a thought or two about some people that don't see eye to eye with me on development and things that may may get there. Um, like why they think you're running might not be aligned with why you think you're running. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't I don't know of too many people that would think I don't have um, you know good intentions. Let's say, but um, that maybe I'm I'm pushing in a direction they don't want to see mission going. For example. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the same things, density development and, and sort of making sure we're doing things as a city that, that are going to serve us well for, for a long time, um, in my view. How about somebody else here on the call? Why are you running? Why are you considering it? And why might others think you're running? Hi, my name is Janice Witt. And... I am running for mayor of Kansas City, Kansas. And Kansas City, Kansas being the way that it is, if anyone is aware of Kansas City, Kansas, um, there is always someone creating a narrative that is probably 
not true about you. I applaud Ben that he managed to pull off not having people putting out stories based on, <laughs> <laughs> well, it is what it is. So right. I, my reason for running is because the people of Wyandotte County have never had a voice to speak for them. Um, most of the voters in Wyandotte County work for the city government in one way or another or otherwise connected to it, um, which kind of gives one a limited view of who are the voters and who are the actual citizens of the community that care other than getting a paycheck, if that makes sense. Are they, uh, you know, so... So Janice, go you, ahead. You, Janice, you said that you're running because you want your voice to be representative of people that haven't had a voice much in the past. Did I, is that what I heard? Um, definitely. Actually, people came to me and okay. said, we need someone who is not afraid. And okay. the one thing I'm not. If, <laughs> so she's afraid. running because she's not afraid. Like, that's a pretty good why. <laughs> That's why you know, I want to drill right down to it. I'm running because people ask me to. I'm running because I'm not afraid. I'm running because I think I have a voice that's representative of some that haven't been represented before. Mm -hmm. Those, I mean, those feel like, I mean, those are legitimate. Why? I mean, whatever your why is, it's it's legitimate because it's yours. Um, you think there's anybody out there, Janice, that thinks contrary to any of that? Oh yes, one hundred percent. Absolutely. Um, I've been at this 20 years. I, I, was, I was fortunate. I've lived in Wyandotte County all of my life, um, owned my own business. My husband owned his own business. We were in Leewood. So we went outside of Wyandotte County to make our money. And we brought that money home to Wyandotte County. That is kind of, uh, that doesn't happen here. Most of the people make their money that, that are in Wyandotte County, make their money and take it outside of Wyandotte County. And that's where they spend it. And so. Okay. So you, you represent something almost opposite of mainstream. You Wyandotte nailed County. it. Yeah. You nailed it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, I'm going to dig into the third kind of pressure. I mean, when you, when you put your name on a ballot or think about it, you, you just, you're putting yourself in a pressure cooker. <laughs> And that, that first, that first you crank up the dial and that first one's on yourself, like, why am I doing this? And then the next dial, you turn it up and it's like, okay, what do the people closest to me think about this? Why do they say I'm running? But then there's this third pressure point and it has to do with these systems that we're a part of, um, you know, employers are systems that we're a part of. Um, uh, demographics are systems that we're a part of family units, our systems that we're part of, communities and neighborhoods, even, um, even topics of interest, things that matter the most to us, there are systems um, connected to those things that we may or may not be a part of. And those are, those are systems that apply pressure to us when we think about running um, that may be aligned with our why and they may be misaligned with our why. And putting your name on the ballot or digging into this work, it's important that you, you don't have to solve for all of those pressures, but you at least have to know, begin to recognize and acknowledge that they're, they're there, they exist. And um, the more, you know, kind of heads up and aware you are going into this place of putting your name on a ballot or submitting your name for selection, um, just the more aware you are, the more capable you'll be down the line, especially if you get elected, at intervening in ways that are meaningful and impactful um, amongst lots of different groups of stakeholders. So I want to send you back to that small group that you were part of before. Sarah, if that's possible, if we have to go to new groups, that's totally fine too. But I want to go back to small groups um, for, yeah, for about five minutes. And I want you to have just a little conversation um, about what your um, your name on a ballot or your name on an application, what does that mean to a system? And you decide what system you want to talk about. But what does it mean to a particular system? 
like if I, for example, if I was going to do, if I was going to rerun for, if I was going to run for election again, uh, the Kansas Leadership Center is a system and they would care about whether or not I had my name on the ballot. And there would be pressures from that system to say or do or do or don't or whatever. There would be not good or bad. It's just systemic pressures um, that would show up in a really prominent way if I put my name on the ballot again. So I want you to think about that. Maybe it's where you work. Um, it could be a particular viewpoint that you have. Um, and that may be Ben's situation. You know, he's got some systemic pressures to represent others that think like he does. Um, and it could even be like, what does your physical person mean to a system that exists out there that is applying some pressure? Like when I, when I ran the first time, and for um, a lot of time when I was an elected official, I was the only woman. My physical person as a female was a powerful thing. Um, and so that was a system that I needed to pay attention to. And those, those systems have whys, <laughs> why they want you to run or why they don't want you to run. And I just want you to just pay attention to that for a few minutes in small group conversation. So let's go there now. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to this next question rather than capturing highlights from that last piece. I think we'll get this in the, in where I'm headed next. Um, I'm wondering, where is there a, okay, we've had three levels of kind of pressure conversation. And I'm wondering now after, you know, about 30 minutes of talk like that, wondering where you think there is alignment in why you're running and what um, others might be expecting from you. Where is there alignment? Is there, <laughs> is there any alignment? For me, I guess, and I, I, let me say I've run before. I have been in this cycle for this. This will be my fourth cycle of running. Uh, initially, I think that's a, that is a great question because I started running not to win the seat, simply to be a voice for the people who were not being heard and to be an example for people who were marginalized and really didn't know that they could stand up and have a voice. So alignment with the desires of the community, I think we're all dead on, especially with our verbiage until you start dealing with people who are already a part of the system who obviously we're not aligned with them um, or we wouldn't be running against them. But as far as the people go, I think that I'm in direct alignment with them and hopefully their vote shows that when they vote for Janice Witt, who has been, basically I have a doctorate in Wyandotte County politics. And, and <laughs> that is from 17 years, like I said, this will be my fourth cycle and finally getting to the point where I said, you know what, I can't convert them. I can't get them to listen. I can't get them to view the people as value other than being the, being the, the, the security on a loan, you know, for, for, us, for bonds. So I decided stop saying it and just go do it. And so, I'm in alignment with the people who want to be heard, who want change in Wyandotte County. I'm definitely out of alignment with those that don't. Sure. And the, the, big, the big question, which we, don't, we won't get into today is, and you won't know until election day, mm -hmm. is your why in alignment with enough other people? That's right. That is hard because I've been there, like I said, three times, mm -hmm. three times. And um, they, the hard part, Raquel, is that they don't, how do we make ourselves reachable? That's my question to you. And now I'm going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother hour. Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's a really important question. And I think, you know, whether you, 
I think it's an especially important question if you have ran before and you're trying this for the second and third and now fourth time. It isn't just about Obviously, it's about votes on election day. But before you even get to that place, Janice, I wonder if you have to, like, how badly do you want this? How badly do you want to be the victor on election day? And even though your why doesn't have to change, can your strategies can you alter your strategies this fourth time around to get to the outcome you want without giving up your why? If and at this point it seems to be working, are you? Did you want me to answer that? No, I think that's just okay. Something to just hold on to because right. you've got campaign season ahead of you. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not here to tell you or talk to you about how to campaign, but I think. It's, this is about understanding, like, why do I want to do this? Why does this matter so darn much to me? And this applies to anybody. What am I, what do I, what is this, what's that sacred cow that I have to hold on to? Mm -hmm. And what am I willing to let go of in service of getting to that place of being elected? Like, no, your, your, your why doesn't matter if you never get elected, mm -hmm. right? Your voice won't be heard. You won't be able to make the progress on the things you care about if you don't get elected. And so at some level, you've got to find some alignment between as many people and yourself as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, and there, there's this, this, this tricky balance of holding on to your purpose and finding ways to energize others around your purpose. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and we have 100% changed at this point. We have people who are interacting and being involved in the campaign um, who are donating because the first time I ran, the, I never allowed anyone to donate to our campaign because we didn't want to lose our why. We <laughs> to be true to, you know, however, like I said, I'm running this time to win. And so therefore, we are accepting donations and we are doing so what you said is dead on. And it's almost like I read your book, <laughs> you know, if you were, <laughs> because that's what I'm doing. This campaign has, it had to change. That had to be the first thing. So thank you for that. Sure. You're welcome. How about, how about somebody else? Jill, Ben, David, anybody? I'm happy to jump in again. Um, yeah, I, th I think, uh, like I say, I, I think there are some some things that I'm passionate about where I, uh, you know, to, to line up with constituents in my ward, especially, I may need to uh, moderate my enthusiasm a little bit and and help align with what, what they want to see. Um, you know, I, I I get very optimistic about what we can do um, in terms of uh, in terms of development, but uh, you know, it's it's important that if I'm gonna if I'm gonna stand up and and represent folks in my ward that I actually do that and you know it's good to let them know where I stand but I'm not going to let that uh, you know <laughs> run away with it, let that take me away from from you know what the people that live in, in ward four want yeah and, you know, I, I, think I think that's really smart Ben you know the last mm -hmm. time uh, when I ran the third time for Newton City Commission I didn't get elected I didn't get re-elected and I had my why was I want more people in positions like this exercising more leadership. And that was language that nobody wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's not what, it didn't resonate with enough people. It felt, it, it just, uh, lots of interpretations, but the end result was I didn't get reelected. And that wasn't how I had campaigned the first two times. That, those weren't my whys, the first two, the first two elections. But I'm not, I don't know if that was it exactly, if that's what kept me from getting elected or, you know, who knows what else. But it was a, it was an important lesson for me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> is my why enough? And how, how aligned or misaligned am I with voters? And I think you have to pay attention to that. Right.
So just here in the last three minutes, um, what do uh, what feels more clear for you after this forty minutes of conversation? What feels more clear, or what do you think you need to do some work on? I'll go ahead since I haven't contributed in the big group yet. Um, I, I, one of the things that I've been wrestling with in my making the decision to actually go file and do this is, um, am I doing this from a position of, I, I'm ambivalent because I'm scared of losing or am I willing to commit to my why in the face of risking not being successful? And I think um, due to the nature of the position that I'm looking at uh, being so firmly rooted in my profession being environment and sustainability, um, you know, there's, to me, that is my platform and there is no, there's not a lot of sway there. There's not a lot of give. It's not like I'm going to, to change my, my opinions on how our water utility should be run from an environmental and sustainability perspective, just in order to, to get, you know, to satisfy um, voters. So it's really kind of, for me, it's almost getting married to my position and and really staking my you know mm -hmm. my claim in it and uh, doing that, notwithstanding the fact there's a risk I might lose. So yeah. that's what I'm really chewing on right now um, in this kind of purgatory between having made the decision to run and actually going down and filing. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's that, that decision isn't made until you put your name, until you pay your fee, right? <laughs> or have enough votes, or you know, enough signatures. Yeah, our minds are really safe places. <laughs> there's no risk in saying it in my head. But I, Jill, I appreciate that. Um, and I would say that you know whether you're married to your why or not. No matter, there's still risk. There's still a risk that you're gonna lose. And it's, you know, having to be okay with that. Yeah, no matter what, there's, yeah, there are no guarantees. So, yeah, <laughs> I love what Leilani just put in the chat, bravo. Bravo that you're thinking about it. I mean, I, I don't know that I've heard from anyone in here today that isn't like, oh, heck no, no way, no how, never. Nobody said that. <laughs> and I love that because it really, it's going to take more people thinking um, about this kind of civic engagement. Um, I don't know. We, we, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not going to get on my soapbox. <laughs> about you know getting our democracy back and and running for running for reasons that matter to us so i'm just gonna i'm gonna pause there and uh say thank you <laughs> because you participated today i love the conversations that we had um i always believe that the people that were in the session were exactly who needed to be in the session um so thank you um for showing up and for engaging in conversation. I don't know what you were expecting. If you were expecting a slideshow for 45 minutes, I'm sorry if I disappointed you, but that's just not how I operate. So <laughs> if you see my name anywhere, you know you're gonna have to have conversation. Um, so thanks for doing that. And I'm gonna turn it back over. Well, not back over, I'm gonna turn it to Beth uh, since Dorothy is gone. So Beth, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Raquel. Um, I'd like to thank Raquel Thiessen for being with us today. And uh, as Raquel was saying, to thank all of you for joining us um, for this workshop of Finding Your Why. We at CEP have had the great fortune of developing our own leadership capacities by participating in le the leadership development programs of the Kansas Leadership Center. Um, and have been that have been fundamental to CEP's Kansas. I'm sorry, these opportunities are made possible through a leadership transformation grant from the Kansas Leadership Center and have been fundamental to CEP's Kansas Environmental Leadership Program, where we are working to develop the next generation of climate leaders in Kansas.
If you are interested in learning more about the Kansas Environmental Leaders and how you can participate in KLC's leadership training, please reach out to us at takeaction at climateandenergy.org. And we hope this has been an informative and educational workshop. You can find recording of this workshop on our YouTube channel, and the slides will be available on our website at www.climateandenergy.org. And don't forget to join us for Pathways to Civic Engagement, Serve and Run at 1230 on May 26th with KU Institute. Um, so again, big thank you to all of our partners in work in, in this work, as well as the generous support of the Kansas Health Foundation for making this work possible. A great afternoon. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Good luck on your campaigns. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>